Hi, everybody. Um, today we are going to be doing another critique. Um, the store that, Etsy store that I am going to be critiquing today is Sparkle and Patina. Um, and Buckbeak is going to be helping me with my critique. Um, she's a very good girl and has a very good eye. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, this is an estate vintage fine jewelry store. Um, as you can see here, she has this listed in her shop description. It's always good to use your keywords here. Um, that definitely helps with your SEO. I also believe that it helps with sales when you have a store name that is related to what you are selling. Um, and this is, so this is pretty good. Um, up here, a few things that I would change is you definitely need to have a picture here. This is boring. Um, and you also need to go ahead and use the function where you can build a big banner at the top. Um, instead of just this, which is quite boring, you can have a beautiful picture of your work, which is more visually stimulating and will ha um, prevent a bounce rate um, of your customers leaving the store. I would also recommend having a picture of yourself as a shop owner uh, people like to know that they're dealing with a person, especially on Etsy. Let's see. Another thing that I wanted to talk about and the reason that this store is so interesting is I do not sell vintage. Um, everything on Etsy is pretty similar, but one thing I do know and from the research that I did is vintage jewelry is a highly saturated market. You are going to have a really hard time using big keywords when you're selling. So one of the things I wanted to go ahead and do is show you the keywords that she's using and why she's not selling. Her photography's fine. Everything else, her keywords are pretty good, but they're just, she's targeting too big of an edge. So for example, um, the first five items are Navajo jewelry. Let's see. So she's got like vintage Navajo. Vintage Nav... Navajo is her keywords. Um, I'm going to go ahead and search that and show you. So there's 50,000 people she's competing with for Navajo. And if you type in Navajo jewelry, if I can spell, it's going to cut that down a little bit, but not by much. Um, 40,000 search results. So how do you get to the first page of this? You aren't until you have a huge shop. Um, this is not a good keyword to target. Let's see what else she's got. Um, red coral cuff. Red coral cuff. And I'm not going to go through all of her products, but there, there is a lot of similarities in her products. Um, this is a good keyword. 1500, that's a good place to be competing. Her photography is better than a lot of these, so she should, I mean, let's, let's see. Patina. Sparkling. Okay, so she's not on the first page, but I think with a little bit of work, she definitely can get up there. Um, so the first thing, let's see, she's got some other keywords like Victorian here, Victorian jewelry. I looked that up. It's a similar kind of story. There's a lot of competition. Um, and I can see this is kind of where her passion's at in the Navajo and Victorian jewelry. However, that's not where her gold mine is. And this is one thing that I discovered in researching her shop. One thing that you want to look at is if you take a look at what you are already selling. So this is this is great that she she is uh, she's been on here for a long time, but she does have 50 sales, which is enough for me to work at, work with and her feedback is great. So she got two five-star reviews recently on a snake ring and a skeleton cross. And I did a little bit of research on these two keywords. And I found that they are excellent niches. So snake ring. You see, there's 8,000 results, but people are buying these, a lot of them. And how do I know that? When you type in snake up here, the first thing that comes up is jewelry. Earrings, necklace, bracelet, jewelry, chain, pendant. So if you have a product like this, this is a great research tool. It's just that 
Etsy predictive search. So one thing that I like to do is I type in cross, or no, 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 I'm sorry, skeleton. All right, here, skeleton key, okay, maybe, but skeleton ring, skeleton earrings. If this is coming up, Etsy knows that it sells well. That's how, how they design. They design this based on what people are looking, or not sells well. Well, yes, this is based on what people are typing in and what people are looking for. And when you have something that a lot of people are looking for that don't have a lot of competition, that's the niche you want to be in. And so I did a little bit more research on other things. So you can, for keyword research, obviously do the direct. You know it's a snake ring. What is it? Um, what color is it? Silver snake ring is probably a great keyword. Okay, so as you can see, silver snake ring, which is what she's selling, is going to cut down your competition just a little bit. Um, and even if you start including if she's able to purchase items with a stone, so peridot snake ring, for example, is probably an excellent keyword. Rose court snake ring. As you can see, these are, I mean, these are ads. Let's look at not ads. Um, most of these are just plain snake rings, but onyx snake ring. That's going to be your three word long tail keyword that's going to do really well. So if she's going to begin purchasing items that she knows are going to sell well, this is the type of thing that I would begin looking for. Um, and so... Are obviously, so she knows that the skull and crossbone thing is selling well, this snake thing is selling well. I started to think about why. So there's, there's an aesthetic with this. There's a style, the type of person that's buying this kind of stuff. So who buys this kind of stuff? Gothic people, perhaps. So that's a gothic style thing. Bikers. Um, I don't know. Stuff like that. So I was thinking, all right, gothic jewelry. Even non-Gothic people are interested in Gothic-style jewelry um, when they're feeling a little bit edgy or they want to be interesting. So I looked it up. Gothic jewelry has a lot of results. However, you could start doing your three-word long-tail keywords and be doing a little bit better. How do I know that Gothic jewelry is selling well? It's the same thing or it's being searched a lot. When I type in Gothic, same thing. I get this ring here. So I click that. All right, this cut down. So gothic jewelry is way too saturated. But gothic ring, 30,000. Okay, I know that this stuff's already selling for her. So I would definitely consider looking into this market. I know her passion looks to be a little bit more into the Navajo jewelry, but this stuff sells really well on the internet. I would consider focusing on this jewelry and maybe even making it her thing if she really wants to sell a lot. Um, I looked up biker ring, and I think it was similar. Yeah, even a smaller niche, biker ring. And this is the same kind of aesthetic. And this is, this is how people are finding their jewelry. They're thinking, my husband's a biker, I want to find him, or, or I am a biker. Um, and I want something cool to wear, so they type in biker ring. They're not typing in Victorian era um, 14 karat gold ring. That's not what they're looking. They're looking for something a little bit more direct, and they kind of don't know what they're looking for. And they might see skull, and they're thinking, that's pretty cool. I'm going to type in skull ring. And it should be the same kind of thing. I think I looked this up a minute ago. Yeah, 18,000. So that that's a pretty small niche that you can succeed in. And why, again, am I telling her to do this instead of Navajo jewelry? Because this is what's selling. These are the last two, well, at least the last two things she got five stars on. Let me see what she's sold. I haven't even looked at this yet. So you can click here on the 48 sales and see what's selling. So she's got this pendant here and the snake ring. Okay. And a lot of Tokens, which is interesting. I don't know anything about this niche. She's selling a lot of tokens. So this is another thing I would start looking at different keywords and figure out why people are buying tokens from you. That's very interesting. Dolphin. 
is interesting too. All right. And I definitely think these big name brands can do well if you can be priced competitively. Like Tiffany, I saw you had David Yerman and a few other um, big vintage brands. I would look it up and just see who you're competing with. So you had David Yerman bracelet. I guarantee tons of people are looking for this stuff. 300 results. That's nothing. This is a great niche. This is a great niche. I would definitely try to sell more of this stuff, but you need to look at the price point. So this is all the same seller, and she's at about um, $240. And then this is another competitor at $275, $285. So let's go back to your shop and see what your price is. Okay, this, this is gold, so that's a little bit different. 2000 6000 let me see if you have any silver. Okay, so this is a little different. I would look for the silver stuff because I definitely think that this $2,000 price point is going to be difficult to succeed in on Etsy, but it's not undoable um, or not impossible. There are some people that I know who focus on this price point and make a lot of money on Etsy. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and type in David Yerman. 14 carat. Let's see what comes up. I just don't think, I don't think that you're going to do well selling these high price point pieces. People are looking to spend 300. If, if they're going to spend $2,000, they're going to go into David Yerman to buy a, a, a piece of jewelry. They might buy it if they walk into your store and it's a good deal because it's used, but online, I think you're going to have a hard time being way outside of this average, this median price point. That was another thing that I looked up with your Navajo jewelry is a little bit outside of the price point or average price point. So you're competing with 55,000 people in Navajo jewelry niche. And look at these prices, $66, $47, $35. 39 I know the quality is different. Your stuff is higher quality, but you're not going to get credit for it because people are going to, they're not going to look past this first page. Okay, they're never going to find you because they want things that are easy to find. And everything here is $40 to $100 max, but mostly around the $30 to $40 mark. Um, here's one coral competing cuff to you that's $780 from a successful shop. Um, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go into these shops that are on the first page that are selling the same stuff as you and play copycat a little bit with their, um, their keywords and then even go into her shop and see what is selling for her. And that might give you some ideas of things that are doing well. There's a lot of engagement, vintage engagement rings. That doesn't surprise me at all. Okay, so that might be something for you to consider purchasing and reselling as a vintage item on Etsy. Um, I don't mean to throw this shop under the bus. I'll try to blur her out, but you can, this is just general research that everyone should do. You should know your competition. You should know what they're doing and don't copy them, but try to do better than them and learn from them. Um, every big shop does this and everyone who started small did this at one point. Um, so yeah, if you want to stick with Navajo jewelry and you don't want to do this biker gothic thing, which I know will sell well, but if you're kind of like, I don't, I, I don't really come across those pieces too often. Um, I would consider studying the beast or the big sellers in your industry on Etsy and seeing what's working for them because it might just be that your products are wrong. Anyways, um, I hope that that was useful for you. I am, you're, you're anyone who has any questions, if I said anything contradictory or didn't make sense, um, please comment below and I'm happy to elaborate a little bit more. I see you. I see you. Um, on some of the things that I said. Like I said, vintage is new for me. Um, I am not 
well versed enough to tell you exactly what to sell, but I can see a few glaring problems and a few good things that um, this shop can definitely work with. Oh, that's that's beautiful. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Thanks again. If you guys liked it, please subscribe. If you would like your own critique from Buckbeak, <laughs> yeah, comment your shop below. Um, I'm mostly interested in niches that I haven't done yet. Um, so if you've got something different than what I've done, you have a higher chance of me making a video. But as of right now, I'm starting out and I'm pretty much critiquing everybody who is sending me their stuff. So Anyways, like and subscribe. Thanks.